Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ramadan Mubarak once again, and welcome to a brand new episode of Bahrain Now with me, Lara Sam'an, as we bring you the country's latest talks this Ramadan. Stay tuned, I will be right back. And now more of our talented Bahraini fashion designers. We are joined by Talal al kabi Welcome to our studio today. Welcome to. Uh, so tell us, Talal, what got you into this industry? Uh, I have a gift as a, my talent when I have four years old. So I like to draw dressing and get inspiration from the, um, anything yani, I saw it when I was a child. Anything you see in front of you, you yeah. get inspiration. So uh, I have that passion when I grow up years by years and uh, my my dream to be a fashion designer so I work hard to start okay and tell us what inspires your designs we see that you use ruffles and you combine very unique bold colors to your designs yeah from beginning I start with uh, create my own st uh, story behind that collection uh, and this story I create a character and uh, I have imagination for the color and the attitude of this uh, character and uh, yani I have uh, a full imagination about this woman what I'm uh, designed for. And what she should wear. So you put yeah. this imagination into your drawings. Yes. As well, tell us about this beautiful we a beautiful piece we have here. Is it, uh, what, is it for Eid? Is it for Ramadan? As can be for Eid. As uh, from uh, my first collection, uh, I call it uh, Layla. I like the name a lot. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I get an inspiration from the holographic and the star in the sky. And okay, the I can see on the patterns yeah. at the bottom there's holographic roses. Yes. As well, tell us about the ruffles and the button details. The ruffles, uh, I think, is uh, very feminine. And uh, uh, yani I like uh, to play with the ruffles. It makes it always look yeah. nicer and like yes. fluffy as yeah. well yeah and i can see as well you added gems with uh, around the uh, yeah. holographic roses so tell us talal how long does it take you to design a piece it's take from uh, two to three weeks to to i done uh, sketches and uh, done everything with the tailor and uh, sometimes i take long time if the the customer uh, want a special thing and yeah uh, they have a little yeah. they're a little bit picky and they keep yeah, changing yeah. so it takes two to three weeks from yeah. when you design to, to the end product yeah okay as well if people wanted to find you how can they find you by my instagram okay amazing amazing yeah. as well um if somebody wants a customized piece like they have something like do you design yes. or do they have to tell you what they want how do you usually do uh, that first i uh, I uh, I go for a meeting with the client. Okay. And uh, I ask her what she looking for. Okay. So what you can she see. Yeah, yeah. What does she need it for? A party? Yes. For a wedding? For. After uh, I uh, start designing from uh, her personality. Okay. That is, uh, yani give the design uh, uh, more touch, more. Uh, Their own personal yeah. touch. As well, touch. does it take long? Like, do you go back and forth a lot with the customers? No, no, no. Just uh, one meeting enough. Amazing, amazing. Tell us about the beautiful piece as well that we have in front that of us. That piece uh, is uh, one of the look of uh, collection Layla also. I like to uh, play with the sequence okay, and the amazing. reflection and the dentil. And also I play with the ruffles and the hand. And I notice you always add the ruffle yeah, touch, which I, I like love. The on this, I love it how it's on the sleeves. Thanks. It's a very Thanks. nice touch. As well, this is part of the Layla collection, correct? Yes. Okay, and what's, what's your favorite colors that you like to use? All the colors, <laughs> because I'm a designer, I cannot <laughs> choose one. So there's nothing that's yeah. your favorite? But uh, I, can, I can say a black. Black, uh, black uh, every time is uh, elegant. That is true. Thank you, Talal, for being with us here today. Your designs You're are welcome. beautiful. You're welcome. Viewers, that was definitely inspiring. Stay tuned for more.
Getting our local news has not been hard, right? That's because Local BH have got us covered, being one of the best and well-known online magazines in the country. And here to tell us all about it is co-founder of Local Bahrain, Ali Farouk. Hi, and welcome to the studio today. I'm Ali, this is Saad. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's Hi, all good. I did. Hi, Saad. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah. tell us, what is Local BH and why the name Local BH? We started Local BH as a local digital news publisher. We felt that a lot of millennials and Gen Z of Bahrain lacked a source of content and news. Um, and so because of that gap came Local BH. Um, all over the world we see uh, new digital media publishers um, providing a lot of fun, entertaining content. And we didn't have this in Bahrain, so we started it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's an amazing thing. That, like you said, it's a way for us to find out the new things happening in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. um, and who are the people behind the team? So it's Saad, he's the CEO and the founder of Local. Um, Local's his brainchild. Uh, I'm the co-founder. Um, we have Fida, who's the chief editor, and she takes care of the content on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we have the team of, um, of graphic designers, uh, content producers, um, salespeople, finance people that then kind of make up the rest of the puzzle. So you're looking at about eight or nine people. Okay, Masha, there's a big team yeah, behind this. Yeah, yeah there's a big sure. team behind working on this. And every day they look for um, new people to like um, advertise or how, how do they usually do it? I mean, so we, we, we generate our revenue through a number of sources. But yeah, um, one of them is content marketing. For we pick and choose our clients, the kind of clients that we want to work with. And then we bring them on board. Um, and then we kind of generate content for them in a way that's organic. So we don't want to be a, a, an overly um, commercial platform. So yes, of course, you want to be a little bit different. We want to be organic, yeah. 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 Um, so at the moment, we're about eight or nine people, uh, but we're constantly growing. Uh, we just recently started um, an internship program. So we're, looking amazing, for, amazing. Yeah, so we're looking for fresh graduates or students in their final semesters, and we're bringing them on board, um, giving them a feel for things. And you know, a couple of weeks down the line, whatever feels right for them, if it's kind of the video production or, or content production. Or yeah, it's something to give them something different as well. That's not really offered here, yeah. like you said, in the content production and stuff, yeah. uh, especially being um, an intern and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, what kind of feedback do you guys get from your followers? Um, we get a lot of different feedback. I think when we first started Local BH, um, the main goal was to provide people with things to do, places to go, people to discover, a lot of local Bahraini yeah. talent Correct. Um, that people didn't hear about. Um, and so we started this pre-COVID. Um, and then when we and then COVID happened, so one of the biggest issues for us was what do we do now? We can't cover events. We can't yeah, tell people yeah. where to go. Yeah, you can't tell them go out. You have to we actually tell them stay home. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, we kind of um, we started this thing called local at home. Um, so we connect with yeah. a lot of health practitioners, mental health people, um, people who are into fitness, and then we delivered a show on a weekly basis where we help people do yoga at home or fitness and whatever. Okay, so you took like a different curve completely during from what COVID. You, yeah during yeah. covid of course yeah. and then like adapted it to now the new yeah. covid uh, so the life. feedback we receive from like uh, from a lot of our followers is that um, now when someone wants a place to go they'll go to local bh um, i am one of those people <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so that's that's super we're super proud to hear that um, yeah. we've established a platform that people trust and can go to amazing amazing yeah. what are you guys planning to do on next um, so for us, next is um, we're getting into video. So video is a big space for us and it's super untapped. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of fun videos. So people try this for the first time. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these uh, videos where people try out new things for the first time and then you see their reactions. Yes, yes, yeah, I have so seen those videos. <laughs> so we're doing a lot of that. We're going to be doing a lot of short form recipes. Um, so we're, we're investing heavily into the video space. Okay, and going to something a little bit different. A little bit different. Um, and then obviously we're tapping into stuff like Clubhouse, TikTok. Um, Clubhouse is the new is thing yeah, that is everybody is on thing. and like yeah. interested in. Yeah. And uh, finally, we're expanding local BH into Saudi. Oh, amazing. So, so it's going to be local Saudi? We're doing cities. Okay. So yeah. instead of doing, because we say we're local, we, w we feel like if we did a local Saudi, it wouldn't be so local Saudi being so huge. So it's going to be like local Khabar or local Riyadh. Right. Right. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Um, what do you guys find that makes you different from other places? Um, I mean, I think f to, to start with, we've been um, able to, um, to tap into, like so I said, Clubhouse and, and TikTok and all these other social media platforms. Um, and connect with people, but we've, like I said earlier, we've been able to find a way to to connect brands with millennials and Gen Z and deliver content in a way that that doesn't seem too commercial. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, it's not just about using articles to deliver content. We also do 
a lot of um, memes have been really, really effective for us. So we do memes, trivia, I've, I've quizzes. read your memes. I've actually reposted a lot of the memes. I love the ones that you do about Bahrain. They okay, yeah, so, so those, funny. Those, those, those do really well for us. But we get paid for our memes as well. So a lot of the clients that we work with, you wouldn't be able to tell, but we get paid for those memes as well. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, because at the end of the day, the ultimate objective is you want people to connect with brands. And it's not just through text and articles. You can do that through, like I said, you can get engagement through trivias and pop quizzes, memes. Um, but our podcast that we do um, every Saturday afternoon, we've been doing that for the last 12 months, I believe. Okay, um, and, and I'm sure that's working very well. Yeah, that does really well. Uh, we post that on IGTV, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we get you know local influencers, artists, musicians, um, anybody that's made a difference um, in their uh, in their in their community. We bring them on board, and it's a, it's a way to get stories out. It's a way. I was just gonna say, it's a way to get stories out. Yeah. Teach people who have right. like some people don't like to speak up, but maybe seeing these people, yeah. it yeah. makes them feel like okay, let me talk about my story next yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, where do you guys see the, the social media industry going in the next five years? Yeah. I think we've seen a huge change already. Um, I think from a traditional news perspective, people were used to reading news from, uh, it's funny we say that at, in a, at, at a traditional <laughs> media studio, <laughs> but I think people are used to seeing news on demand or you know monthly in, in the form of a newspaper. And I think now news has changed because we as young people are sharing news um, by ourselves. So it's, it's super shareable. Um, and we we saw that because people had sort of uh, how do I say this uh, news was in people's hands, so you can share memes, you can share what's happening in Bahrain within seconds. Whereas in social the social media has changed that actually. In the past, you have to wait till you get you a letter, to till Absolutely. the newspaper comes to your house. Now everything yeah. is just like yeah. Okay. Right. So we we see that we see the industry changing dramatically, and um, we've we hope to have made a difference in the last year and a half of local bh and we hope to continue to make that difference in the next few years uh, but like i said one of the places we're going into is video um, clubhouse being one from a talk perspective um, and yeah so that's mm. where we i love your initiative i find it amazing i actually mm -hmm. always check it thank you guys for being with us in the studio today i love your local platform don't forget to get your local news straight from local bh stay tuned we'll be right back Let's check out what we have going on this Ramadan in the following reports. Stay tuned. If you like a little bit of spice with your iftar, Chef Mohammed's been making a garlic chili sauce for years that keeps his customers coming back for more. My name is Mohammed Lansari and uh, I have been uh, working on this chili garlic paste for the past 10 years. I went to this restaurant and uh, they had this really nice chili paste. It was a Chinese restaurant. And uh, I used to go there sometimes just because of the chili paste. It was amazing. So of course you can't ask for the recipe because they will never give it to you. Uh, so I tried to do it myself at home and uh, I tried so many times. Um, I, I guessed what were the ingredients and the chili paste and everything um, until uh, I created this. I remember the first customer actually who tried it went uh, crazy. <laughs> um, he kept ordering every time and then once I decided to stop, he kept asking me that you need to you know, continue because I can't live without it. He was uh, actually eating the chili garlic paste even on his toast in the morning. So I was like, wow, he's addicted to the chili garlic paste. Funny enough, I've been doing this for a very long time now, but for me, this is really spicy and I don't eat it. Thanks to my friend and family, they supported me a lot and they thought that maybe I should do this and I was like, you know what, why not actually, let me give it a try. And uh, this is how it happened. As they say, I make it with love. Hoping you can handle the heat, this is Khalid Hidris, reporting for Bahrain International.
viewers, we have reached the end of tonight's episode. Don't forget to join us same time tomorrow right here with me, Lara Samaan, for more upcoming guests and segments. Good night and God bless.